That is so freaking awesome! Can I do a little filming here? Of course. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dorks and Bolts. We have finally installed the dashboard, the light uh, sensor, the, the head-up display, the digital cluster, and we have coded everything in. Everything is working absolutely amazing, and I can't be happier that I am right now with how the car is turning out to be. Before we begin, I want to thank everyone that has signed up and subscribe to our channel. It really motivates us to keep going and make more content that it's more useful for you guys. So thank, we, we can thank you enough. It's really nice to see that people are enjoying our content. We want to congratulate our winner of our Carly Reader for iOS, Margaret Kleisman. Please contact us through our Facebook page or send us a message in this um, video. Congrats, and we hope that you find this useful, and I am sure you're gonna start playing around with some easy coding that you can find with this app. We have received another box of goodies from ECS Tuning. Uh, if you guys want to get your BMW parts, get it from these guys. They're pretty quick to ship. ECS Tuning, if you're uh, looking at this, uh, wink, wink. We could use some uh, sponsorship. We love that. <laughs> anyway, so we have received a bunch of things that we have. We are planning for next episodes and things to do. We have got like a bunch of plastic clips that are broken all over the trunk and the car, the lining, that kind of stuff that we will replace. We are replacing the license plate holder things as well. We are also going to replace the mounts for the jack points since uh, whoever owned the car before I did probably jacked the car with, uh, I don't know, with a forklift, I don't know. They, they, these things are completely destroyed so we'll change them. We have all those four and we have a uh, brake fluid because we are definitely going to do a a brake fluid change as well but the most important part that we were waiting for is this 61359856157 extra points to whoever can tell what this is if you don't know you'll see it later in this video because we are putting finally our rain and light sensor on the car also we have this really cool things totally unnecessary to get but I wanted to have the car fully on LCI mode so I got these covers with that have this little metallic trim metallic trim here for the passenger and the driver's side so I will install that later on that video as well. So I'm gonna do a video that it's only like cosmetic things. So this, the the jack points, the, you know, all those license plate things and the brake fluid coming up. So stay tuned for that one. Now for the project at hand, we have our silicone or whatever this thing is for the rain sensor. We have here, our rain sensor, the one that was installed in the car and the actual uh, light sensor for the head up display. And this goes on top of this, between this and the windshield. So we will install this on that, then we will install this on the windshield and we will continue doing the uh, head up display retrofit, programming, coding, and doing all that stuff. Okay, since we couldn't resist opening them up and see what the real difference is, well, here we are. On this side, we have the head-up display one 
and on this side we have the original one that didn't have a head up display and the differences are quite clear so first of all on this side on the head up display one you will see that there's this new photo sensor here that is definitely the light sensor and on this one it's missing so basically that seems to be the only difference all the other stuff is in there well obviously the the board is different as well but the sensors for light are the same they are in the same locations you have the same chips here and this little photo sensor here that i believe is probably for the humidity right there but the only one that is missing is this one right here so that's the one that makes the whole difference and the change of things underneath they pretty much have the same you have all the same holes and stuff so no difference there so well anyway now we know to install this we have to peel the yellow part which will leave us with this part like this and we will just center it on top right in the middle of the thing so you just place it on top in the middle and let it sit do not press it let it by itself take shape and do not press on it because when we put it on the windshield that's when it's going to take the full shape of the the let's say the the round and it will remove all the bubbles out of it but just let it sit and it will just by itself making a perfectly straight film do not remove this the the, the plastic cover until we're ready to put it on the windshield and remember if you miss this step well, you're screwed. You need to get another one. Well, I, I don't really know. Maybe you can pull it, pull it out again, but I'm not willing to test that. We'll see what happens when I remove this cover. All right, so let's get install this thing installed in the car. Getting the rear view mirror out is not as hard as it looks, but you gotta be careful to not break the windshield. So the best way that I found was to put the screwdriver in like that, pry it out like, pushing inside this groove here not directly on the windshield because you're gonna crack it so you put it like this lift on this side a little bit then go to the other side here do the same thing pushing on this little tabs here and then pulling the mirror downwards like like in this direction straight down don't tilt it that way don't tilt it this way that way or that way straight down otherwise you'll definitely break it then uh, well obviously you know you need to remove uh, disconnect all the things before you take it out and what you are going to get is your old rain sensor that looks like so and you're gonna leave that little goo there which we're gonna have to remove with uh, Q-tips, a finger, lots of patients try to take it all out, like roll it out, because this thing will never dry, it's just like a, a gel. Like if you remember in the video where Garing was explaining how to do it, it is just something that basically never dries. Okay, now it's perfectly clean. And if there's 
anything in this retrofit that I'm gonna take the extra time to make sure it's perfect is this. Because this is gonna be not only affecting the head-up display, but it's also be gonna affecting my lights, the wipers, and a whole other bunch of stuff. So if anything you wanna pay attention to is this. All right, so now we're ready to put the, uh, the sensor in. So before you put anything in, make sure you familiarize yourself with how is it gonna go in. Now, if you see the bracket here, we need to slide this pin like so, and then we just push it all up. The, this clip goes like that, and it secures the thing in there. Perfect. All right, same thing. We're gonna clean the just so we don't have any fingerprints or anything in here. Just give it a, a quick clean for the camera so nothing is dirty. Okay, so looking in retrospect, I should have put the camera first because now I have to battle my way in with this thing because the camera goes on top of the, the plug and you have these two guides here that the camera needs to get in. So now, all right, so lesson learned. First, before putting the sensor, put the camera in. Okay, that wasn't too bad after all. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Let's keep plugging stuff. Okay, so a little wire goes here. That goes here. Okay, remember this is for the mirror. We'll plug our heater, our defroster here. And the camera as well. All right, have all our cables in, everything is tight and where it's supposed to be. Now we put the mirror So the mirror you just to place it back you just slide it in from the from the back and it just it's a very easy way to put it back in make sure that the wires are all in a good location and not getting in the way of anything and the last thing are just uh, the, the, the trim covers which is you know just the last part of it Before we do that, we're gonna remove all our, our beautiful tracks that we've been here. And yes, I am cleaning with my mask. Okay. 
Okay, that has been clipped. And for the other side, we'll do the same. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we have everything back as it should be. As expected, we placed the sensor. There's not a single bubble in there, which means that we've, did it, we've done it successfully. So we are good to go. Uh, this is the, the gasket that goes on top of the head of this plate and the three screws that go hold it in, in the frame. Like I said before, we don't have the uh, the nut that goes underneath, but we found these little guys. Uh, the part number is this. So we are gonna use this to put it underneath here and just tie the thing on the rails here. All right. Okay, so the gasket is in place, just uh, simple like that. And there, there are these uh, grooves here on the gasket, just slide on top of this on each side. And in the uh, in the back, you just have to slide it in, like you slide it in, then just sit on top, it sits on top, and then we just place it here. Before we place the, the head up display in there, our wire has to come sort of like this. So the plug for the head up display, as you can see underneath between those two heat, uh, uh, what's it called? Well, this heat things. <laughs> uh, so make sure that the, the wire goes like that, makes a, a loop around. And you're all good. We have fitted the head up display and it's looking nice. As we have learned many times here in Dorks and Bolts, we are going first of all test that the head up displays work correctly. We are going to try to hook up as much, most electronics as we can um, before putting the dashboard because you don't want to put the dashboard and realize that you didn't plug something or a you know, wire broke or something. So that's what we're gonna do. We have mocked up everything. Everything is holding by threads here. With, uh, yeah, so we have plugged most of the electronics and we now can say that, look at that. We have a head up display and it seems to be functioning. It seems to be fully functional. Uh, I don't know if you can see right here, speed and speed limit recognition. Now let's put this all back together and enjoy our head up display. This is beautiful. I'm so excited. All right, everything is back again where it belongs. Now we have everything is looking great. The dashboard, as I told you, now matches here. This is the uh, other color that I had before. I left this ones like that because I kind of like the contrast of that darker red in that one. But everything else, it's uh, perfectly matched. The only thing I did just to make sure that everything matches perfectly was that this, I, I give it a little coat on this side, on the, on the glove box, just to make sure that it matches as well. So. Everything is uniform as is, and you can see it just looks absolutely amazing Which reminds me that these seats need a little bit of cleaning because they're super filthy That will be the next thing that we will do in the next episode Look at this thing. It looks beautiful Okay, so with that done the only thing left to do would be basically code in the Head up display, the MBT unit, calibrate the sensor, because that's definitely something that you have to do. 
and uh, that's it so let's get on with that as soon as you connect the the cluster you're gonna get like a ton of errors you're gonna get like a SOS malfunction the um, warning pedestrian collision you're gonna get a bunch of bunch of errors so nothing is gonna really work plus you're gonna see that red dot there which means like it's a the tamper dot the cluster does not match the VIN of the car so the, we know that this cluster is virginized and it has basically nothing works right now um, so what we're gonna do is code it in and see the changes other than that it looks gorgeous like wow I'm so surprised it looks amazing uh, let's see oh yeah the the so the the switch of um, echo sport and um, comfort it works but other than that yeah the the, 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 the scroll this doesn't work uh, let's see mode no, that doesn't work yeah none of none of this works probably Chris control yeah nothing nothing else all right so we know that nothing works we, what we will do is just code it in so first thing that we notice is that we can read the the, the dashboard but there's no CAFD file so what we're gonna do is like the usual thing we're gonna first try to inject it and so we're gonna go to detect the correct <coughs> KFD uh, we got we got the list of possible KFD and we are gonna put it at the same the same one that we have our car currently we have it up to 2030 and we do have the possibility to have the same the same one so we're, we're gonna just pick that one okay now now that the CA CAFD is available now we can code the the actual combi of our car however we're gonna do the usual thing so we're gonna save this uh, FA we're gonna save it to something else and then we're gonna modify the dates and all the stuff that we usually do so we're gonna call this FA um, after 6WB one that we're gonna use now we're gonna edit so here we have to do a bunch of things here first of all we're gonna modify this and we are going to change our elements here so we're gonna change here our 6WA 6WB okay now we apply the changes we go all the way to the top like the usual thing we are gonna calculate our F FP so now we see that we have all the all the options and if you want to check that it is applied you can look here in the list you're gonna locate 6WB, which is right here, it's instrument display. Okay, so now we know that it's safe. And there's another thing that this is the, gonna be the FA that it's gonna go to all the other modules in the car that needs to that need to match the 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 cluster. So basically, we need to code the MBT, the CAFS. Uh, probably the ICM, the FEM, the REM, um, and most of the items we are gonna code them with this effect. However, for when we do change 
the, when we code the FA, we're going to modify this date when we are going to code the, the cluster because that it's a different FA that the cluster needs to identify on a different date. So just make sure that you code with the, this date, your current modules, and the cluster, since it wasn't made to be on this date, it needs to be coded to a higher date. Same thing, we're gonna try to put the same date on the on the MBT, uh, on the MBT, on the ATM, and on the cluster. So, so far, let's go with this. We're gonna reload this file. Now, we are going to go to PCM. We're gonna load our FA. Okay, so we're gonna load our 6WB. We're gonna calculate, All right? We don't have any errors here. We're gonna go to master and we're gonna write the EFA. Now we see that it matches our bin. So we have that, okay? So that, that's done. We're gonna go to coding. And the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna save this as, so we're gonna save this for the combi. We're gonna call this for the AT, MBT, ATM. So all these three, and actually the cafes, let's just put it here. Okay, so we're gonna save it like that. Now we're gonna edit this one, and in here, we're gonna change the date. So here the date, we're gonna put it 0317. Seems, so, sounds about right. Okay, we're gonna save it, but we are not gonna say we're not gonna use this to uh, code our. Um, other modules. This is this is gonna be only used to code the MBT and the combi. Just remember that. Don't code the entire car with this because you're gonna mess it up really bad. We load this again. Okay, we select the combi and now we're gonna code. Seems like everything is working. We have our, our dashboard, our cluster, and there we go. Something seems that it's not going right. We still have the tamper dot there. However, we have, we already see the gas. We have our speed limit, and we don't have, <clears throat> everything is functional now. We don't have any more errors. We try to activate our safety and everything works there. Everything is good. However, I don't understand why do we have the temper dot. So for that, we're gonna we're gonna read here the coding data. We do see that we have our VIN number there. We're gonna read we're gonna read our ECUs again and we see that we have the combi here. So after panicking for like 20 minutes and thinking that I messed something bad, well I didn't. I just let the car go to sleep, went outside, came back, and everything was working fine as it is supposed to do. And Oh my god, it's 
so freaking awesome! Can I do a little filming here? Of course. Play. Find our result. We have our cluster. Everything is working like it should. We have the speed limit. We have the uh, directions. Here we scroll. We have our music. We have our phone. We have. We set the cruise control. It just says the cruise control is ready, but there is no indication there. So we can set it, we cannot set it yet, but you know, it's not activated. Cruise control is enabled, but not active. And that's it. Thank you for watching. It has been a wonderful experience to do all these retrofits and there's gonna be more. Now that I have started this, I don't think I'm gonna be able to stop unless there are no more things to put extra in the car, I guess. But there, there will be more things. As I said at the beginning of this episode, we are gonna be installing all those cosmetic items to make it uh, look a little bit better. And then we will keep going with more um, retrofits like lane change warning. Um, I will try to do automatic parking, like uh, parking assist and I don't know, whatever else I can find. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Um, click the notification bell so you can have all our videos whenever they come out. And see you soon, bye.